This week, we have more flowers, which means more money. Our goal is to sell $1,000 at the farmer's market. Every week last year, that's what we were going for, and we never made it. This year, we need to do better. This year, we need to finally get those $1,000 markets to make it worth our time. Last week, the flowers only just started, and they made a huge difference on our sales. We did 450, but we only had 12 bouquets to sell. This week, I have buckets and buckets. There's going to be lots of flowers, so there should be lots of excitement for our customers down at the farmer's market. Every single market means a new item that's coming into season, a new item that's coming down to the market, and it's exciting for our customers. This week, we have zucchini, which is so exciting because it's such a summer item. Exciting news, we have zucchinis to harvest in the greenhouse. Beginning of June, zucchinis already. Things are really taking off in here. I know. Things are growing like crazy in this greenhouse with all the heat that we've been getting this week. Just two weeks ago, these were nowhere near the same size. The first few zucchinis don't get it pollinated properly, so they end up, they'll grow, and then the tips just don't really grow. So I pick them as little babies, and then Ian and I get to pick, eat them. That was perfect. Yeah, you like that? Boom! It's gonna blow people's minds. Either that or every other farmer's gonna have these too. And then a meal for us. Six for them. A meal for us. We have been really busy this week getting all of the farm planted out. This section behind me wasn't anything last week. Ian spent all of last week preparing the ground and this week we got down landscape fabric and planted out thousands of flowers. There's beds and beds of flowers in here. We have space to be able to put our next planting of lettuce. I have 1,200 sunflowers planted and another full bed of tomatoes. It is incredible to see this all happening, this all getting done. And I've actually now at this point planted all of the transplants that need to get planted. It is amazing how much help it's been this year having our employee here to help me, you know, be organized and actually be on schedule. I'm, if anything, ahead of schedule on planting, which feels amazing. The goal this year was to be planted to our fence line, to extend our farm all the way down our property. I'm currently standing at the fence and you can see how close that is. We probably have about five more beds to prep for this year and plant out and, and then that's it. We've, we've gotten to our goal of farm size for year three. It's, it's an incredible feeling to be standing here and seeing all these things that we wanted to happen, happen already. As amazing as this is, as incredible as it is to get all that planted, we also got this done this week, which is mind blowing. This wasn't even necessarily on the list of things to get done anytime soon. This space is really big. This is probably enough space for about 40 of our 50 foot beds. And the other night, our neighbor was out with his tractor and had the mulcher attachment behind it. And I asked him, I was like, hey, if I get all this knocked down, could you come mulch this up for me? He said, no problem. So I made it a priority. I went and rented a brush saw. I got it all chopped down. And then that night he came over and he mulched it for us. And now look at this. It's, it's looking amazing. He's gonna come back with a plow probably after it rains sometime and just tear this all up for me. And then, you know, I can start 
going through it and getting it all prepped for next year. Like we said, this is our third market this year and it's starting to feel like we're getting back into the routine. You know, I'm feeling like I'm ready for it. You know, it, it doesn't feel as overwhelming and you know, it is a lot of work. I can definitely feel it in my body. <laughs> my body's tired and even still, I feel motivated. I feel happy. I'm excited to go to the market tomorrow. We've already got a lot of work done because last night Serena harvested all of the flowers. Stem looks pretty good on that one. Full stem of it. Good. Stem legs. <laughs> have like some, and then it's dormant. Mosquitoes! What? There's mosquitoes trying to sting me, Sam. Spinning away, spinning my life away. So I'm pretty far behind schedule. I was feeling real good because we really don't have that much work that needs to get done today. Um, and then as soon as I started working, I cut my finger really bad with the snips 
And on a day like today where my hands are just in the water, in the dirt, in the water, in the dirt all day, this is like the perfect storm for any sort of cut to get infected. So having a really bad cut on my hand is pretty much worst case scenario. So now I've, I'm, I got band-aids and this protective glove to keep it dry and clean, but it's, it's really slowing me down. Do 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 do. We're washing greens, got lots of salad mixes going down. We got our 100% lettuce, which means I have to pick all the weeds out. And oh, we have the most beautiful Swiss chard, baby Swiss chard that we're gonna be sending down and baby kale. So I have that all bagged up. We have green garlic, which is super fun because it's a weird thing. It's one of those things you kind of can only find at a farmer's market. And then you know, I have head lettuce to pick. I have bok choy to pick. Um, but the bulk, the big remainder is putting together arrangements with all the flowers that I picked yesterday. The ranunculus look ridiculous. Ridiculous. <laughs> Ready? So beautiful. Taking a break. There's definitely gonna be over a thousand dollars worth of stuff going down this week. Yeah. There'll be so you you need to sell a thousand dollars. I'm harvesting and preparing a thousand dollars. The the issue to getting to a thousand dollars isn't farm production, it's sales. So how are you? gonna sell me a thousand dollars. I'm gonna be my normal, delightful, cheery self. Hi, would you like to buy some veggies? <laughs> How have you been pushing kale? You know, normally people looking at the bags, they're trying to decide between the spinach, the lettuce, and the kale. And so I don't care which one they buy, really. You know, like, yeah, until we're sold out. Whatever one they're kind of looking at is my favorite. This week we have a new product and it's a product that lots of people aren't familiar with. We have green garlic, which is when you pull out your garlic before it creates any sort of head. <clears throat> and the idea is that you use it in the same way that you use green onions. What I want you to do is I want you to use the green garlic as an opportunity to upsell the baby kale. Yeah. Because here at our house, one of our favorite ways to use green garlic and garlic scapes is to mix it with kale or the red mustard and to make a pesto out of it. Yeah. And it's actually one of the best pestos that we make. I do like to tell people about how we cook things. Yeah, totally. We don't and... need to bring recipes <laughs> because we spend the entire day telling recipes. Yeah. And then it's more intimate, you know, people care more about the interaction yeah. than the takeaway recipe card. And then I get a call later on. They're like, Hey, how was that recipe again? <laughs> not actually. No, not actually. <laughs> I hung up a ranunculus to dry and this is it like almost fully dry. It looks incredible. They're definitely, whatever doesn't sell, isn't going to go to waste because that will definitely sell later. Look at that, the red Swiss chard, the baby red Swiss chard. Doesn't that look incredible? Yeah. How could you not sell that? Back to Chorin. Back to Chorin. Back to Chorin.
I have returned. So I have all my flowers out. And I'm trying to figure out <laughs> what I'm gonna do with them. These ranunculus are like pretty fancy, pretty high end. These aren't, these aren't snacks, right? Like these are special. These cost a lot to grow. I don't wanna sell these at a price that isn't what they're worth, right? So I'm thinking that they're kind of like $3 each. And even that is kind of like lower than, than what other florists around here would definitely sell them for. So I'm thinking I'm going to do bunches of five. You know, that's, that's like a beautiful bunch of, of flowers. And then I'm gonna price them at 15. And then if they don't sell, when they come home, I'm gonna hang them upside down and dry them. And then two weeks from now, send them back, still is 15, and I'll for sure dry them, and sell them then, because they look so good, dry. And then I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna go for $20 bouquets this week. Last week, the bouquets that we made, the big, you know, the big bachelor button bouquets, we sold them for $15, and they sold really good. And now I have lots more <laughs> to work with, though I don't have my Swiss chard, definitely, feeling the loss of my Swiss chard this week. Um, but I did, I went and picked some raspberries and, oh, Ian's gonna love this one. Because it's weird. But I picked cherries. No, I'm more into that. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that's cool. That's gonna look really good. I'm super stoked because we have rocket snapdragons this week. Yeah, not right? just the Chantilly. Not the, like, you know, everyone's like, oh, the Chantilly, they're so special, they're so open. But the, th the thing that I love is the rocket. And everyone's like, eh, it's classic, boring garden. But I love how just like, err, structured it is. You know, like, for me, it's like, floofy cottage, like, meh, Chantilly. Like, it could use less cottage. And then like rocket, I'm like, yes. These are chive flowers. The color on them is amazing. But it's because they're like past their prime. Yeah. So so I'm like picking them and using them, but they're like, you shouldn't. And basically the idea is they're gonna be drying in the vase. This was the bouquet from last week and that fell down and then came home. We enjoyed it in here and then everything was dying so I hung it up to dry it. But yeah, so you can see this is this is like them. They kind of were dying in the vase. Them dried looks the same as those over there. And so as long as I don't put too many in for the water to turn scummy, um, the, they'll keep that kind of dusty palette. They're so bad. Make me a bouquet. When you build a bouquet, you need to think about what each of the flowers is worth when you're putting it together, right? So I've determined I'm making $20 bouquets. The way I make a $20 bouquet is I start to do some math, right? So if, if I'm saying, okay, this is going to be worth $1.50, um, then, you know, if I use 10 of them, that's $15. Right? But like, this has value. Can't like disregard the value on this. And then other things have lower value, right? Like, like this is a weed, right? Like this isn't worth a dollar. This isn't necessarily worth a dollar, but you know, I also wouldn't necessarily say 50 cents. Um, and then some things are worth like nothing, which is why I don't want to grow them like bachelor buttons um, or, or like, a frond of grass. What about a KX1? A KX1 is worth all the money because you can't buy that. That's like exclusive to here. If it's 20 bucks, we need more than just like six of these and filler. Yeah. Right? But we're gonna go for like cottagey look. Let's start with three. Look at that. And then we're gonna put some of this in. Put some more of these in. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, but it's 
twenty dollars, so it still needs more. Now we're just gonna finish off with the ring around the outside edge of a bunch of blue bachelor buttons to you know fluff it out, give it you know the bachelor buttons they drive me crazy because no one has any value to them, right? So you have to do a lot of work to clean all these stems to use them in the bouquet. But at this time of year, when there's nothing else, they really add, add something in, in the way that you appreciate, right? Because there's, there's not very many other options. It's looking pretty good. Yeah. You gotta not cut your finger. Okay, there we go. $20 market bouquet. Yes. Yeah. Nothing I'd buy with all these fluffy cottage flowers. I'm I'm taking home the the snapdragons and the kale. That's the one for me. All the cats. Right, Bob? It's bedtime for me. I got an early morning tomorrow, so. Okay, you go to bed. I'll I'll come wake you up when it's time to go to the market. Pretty much, right? <laughs> it's getting close to midnight. Really? Yeah. Well. Okay, go to bed again. <laughs> Good night. I love you. Love you. The sky is lightening up and the birds are singing. <laughs> so I've obviously spent way too much time working on these flowers and I need to get to bed as quietly as possible because Ian's gonna be waking up in a half an hour. It's just after 4 a.m. My alarm just went off. Uh, as my alarm was going off, Serena walked into the room, ready to go to bed. She passed the relay baton, and now it's my turn to get ready to go to market. Apparently we have over $500 worth of flowers today, so that's really exciting. That's lots, and they look great, so I'm excited to try to sell them all. It's about 5.30 and I am all packed up, so let's get to that market.
Today at the market, we sold $715, our best market of the year so far. Still not the $1,000, but you know, we're getting closer. And today the flowers sold really well, which I think is the key to, you know, making that $1,000. The yellow bouquet sold first, no real surprise because those yellow ranunculus, they actually look gold. Like, I don't think that it's fair to call them yellow. I think that they're gold and they just pop so much. People were like drawn to them. The salad mix sold well. The lettuce sold better than the kale, but the kale sold okay. And the chard sold, you know, a few. The bok choy sold better than it did last week. It wasn't flying off the shelf, but I was consistently selling it. So that was good to see. It started raining when the market opened and it got heavier and heavier until at one point it was actually raining pretty heavily and that stopped all the traffic for a while. But then afterwards it picked up, there was a rush. We did the display a little bit different this week and I really liked how I could be right out in front all the time. Uh, I basically spent the whole market, you know, standing at the front of my booth and I was able to interact with customers a lot better than I felt like I normally could. I really liked the way that it was set up. So you gonna have to think about that some more because there's downsides to it. It's hard to shop with how far back it goes, but there's definitely a big upside of me being a better seller. The end of a market is always like the bookend to the week. And this week was a really hard working week. We spent a lot of time uh, expanding the farm down at the bottom. Uh, it was just a lot of physical labor in the hot sun. So having a decent market to you know finish off the week feels really good to me. You know, we're not selling $1,000 yet, I think pretty soon we have to get that expectation that now we should be selling $1,000. I don't feel that expectation yet because we don't have carrots, but uh, very soon, you know, I, not just Serena, but I too believe that we should be in that $1,000 range for markets. But I'm happy with this one. The flowers sold really well, and I think that's the key to our future success.